you can become a millionaire in the stock market. And I'm going to show you how. A lot of people have asked me how they can become financially free, how they can quit their jobs, retire early, or just have enough money to survive through retirement. And the goal is to come up with a long-term investing strategy. A lot of people want to become overnight millionaires. And believe me, I get the desire. But the reality is, Making money in the stock market is a long-term game. You have to think long-term. And I'm not talking a year or two. I'm talking 20, 30, 40 years. So what we did is about a year ago, we started a portfolio called the Millionaire Club Portfolio. And in this Millionaire Club Portfolio, we are investing $250 every other week. That works out to be $6,500 per year or $125 per week if you prefer that. So what a lot of people who are following this channel are doing is they're taking $250 from each paycheck and they're putting it into their Millionaire Club portfolio. And in that portfolio, we are buying value stocks. Now, there's a lot of different investing strategies that you can use to make money in the stock market. One is a speculative strategy where you're not really focused on any actual analysis of a stock. You're just buying what other people are buying in the hopes that the stock continues to go up. Another strategy is a growth strategy. With a growth strategy, you are buying stocks that are expected to grow in the future, and you're hoping that the company can meet their growth expectations and the stock price can go up. The other type of strategy you could use is the one that I am using for this portfolio, and that is called a value stock strategy. In a value strategy, you're buying stocks that are fundamentally undervalued in the hopes that they get back up to fair value at some point in the future. Now, with any of these strategies, nothing is guaranteed. Of course, you could always lose money. A speculative strategy, you might buy a stock that everybody's buying that's going up and you might buy at the top and it immediately goes down. A growth strategy, a company might miss their growth expectations, they might run out of money, and the stock price might go down. A value stock strategy, everything might look great when you buy it, and then some news event comes out that just ruins the valuation, and the share price goes down. So there's always going to be a risk. But by implementing a good, successful strategy, you can, by being very selective, find stocks that can go up by an average of 20 to 30% per year. Warren Buffett did this when he first started. John Templeton did this when he first started. In fact, many billionaires used these strategies to make money in the stock market and achieve around a 30% annualized return when they were first starting out investing. So that's what we're attempting to do as well. And I'm showing you exactly how to do it in this portfolio with all the trades that we're buying. So what I want to do is show you what the portfolio looks like currently, because I know that there's a lot of new people to this channel who have maybe never seen this portfolio before. And then I'm going to go over the stocks that I bought this past week in the Millionaire Club portfolio. Now, in this portfolio, we currently have 24 stocks. Now, ideally, for a good diversified portfolio, I like to keep anywhere from 20 to 30 stocks in the portfolio. I don't like to keep less than 10 at a bare minimum because then you're just not diversified. And I don't like to keep more than 30 because then it's just too much to actually manage. My ideal number is 20, but anywhere from 10 to 30 is ideal. Now, with that said, let's go over the stocks that are in the portfolio. You're going to notice some of these stocks are down, some of these stocks are up, but overall, the portfolio is up. And the first stock we have is ALLY, which is Ally Financial, then AMTD, which is AMTD Idea Group, then ATLC, which is Atlanticus, and then C, which is Citigroup, CCRN, Cross Country Healthcare, CMC, Commercial Metals, CVS, CVS Health. That's a new one that we bought. I'll go over that in more detail. CVX, Chevron, 
ECPG, Encore Capital Group, FINV, Finvolution, GM, General Motors, GRVY, Gravity, GSM, Ferroglobe, HDSN, Hudson Technologies, INVA, Innoviva, MMM, 3M, OXY, Occidental Petroleum, QFIN, QF Technology, TGNA, Tegna, VALE, Valet, VYGR, Voyager Therapeutics, WBA, Walgreens Boots Alliance, XOM, ExxonMobil, and ZIM, ZIM Integrated Shipping. By the way, if you want to see the full portfolio and all the buys and sells that we made, as well as the full list of current holdings, down in the description of this video is a link to the portfolio. There's an Excel sheet that you can see the full portfolio, all the buys, all the sells, all the money that's been deposited, the profits, the losses, everything. Check the description of this video for a link for that Millionaire Club portfolio. Now let's talk about the trades that I made on Friday, which was our last buy. I buy these stocks every other week on Friday, which is a payday. The first stock I bought was CVS. We bought one share at $65.52. We bought six shares of WBA Walgreens Boots Alliance at an average cost of about $23.64. And we bought six shares of TGNA at an average cost of $15.71. By the way, if you wanna know all the stocks I'm buying as I actually place the trades, you don't have to wait for a video to come out. You can follow me on Twitter where I post the buys within minutes of making them. You can follow me on Twitter at twitter.com slash realscottcurry. That's twitter.com slash realscottcurry. All right, now let's talk about the stocks that I bought for this portfolio. And if you're just now joining us in this portfolio and you're wondering which of these stocks to buy right away, it's entirely up to you. I do need to tell you that this is not financial advice. Nothing I mentioned today is a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold any asset. These are just my opinions, which may or may not be accurate. Please do do your own research before investing in any of these stocks. All right, the first stock I bought on Friday was WBA, Walgreens Boots Alliance, and we added on about six shares to this stock. Now, WBA had already been in a downtrend, but it really sold off on Friday. Now, if you look at the P-E ratio, it's currently negative because of the last four quarters, there was one quarter that was really bad that caused the overall P-E to be negative. In other words, they had a loss on the year, but they are expected to turn profitable again for the next three quarters. And the reason that Walgreens stock dropped so much is because their CEO stepped down. Now, when it comes to a CEO stepping down, you've really got to ask yourself, why? And in the case of Walgreens Boots Alliance, it doesn't look like it was anything that they necessarily did wrong, like they were fired. It looks like this was something that the CEO had been planning for some time, and it was just made official last week. Now, we don't know for sure. Walgreens hasn't really released any details on why the CEO left But this is the belief based upon the way that the public statement was released. So for that reason, I understand the stock falling as people get fearful about what does this mean for the future of the company. But with the CEO gone, it really doesn't change the fundamentals of the company at all. And of course, they do have a very good interim CEO. So I'm personally really not worried about this. And I see the dip that Walgreens Boots Alliance made as a buying opportunity, a way to get the stock for much cheaper when it's already undervalued. But by the way, Walgreens also currently has a dividend yield of over 8%. So if you're looking for a good dividend stock, you might want to consider Walgreens Boots Alliance as well. The next stock I bought on Friday was six shares of TGNA. Now, TGNA didn't really have any news that caused it to sell off on Friday, so I saw this as a good dip buying opportunity. The PE ratio is currently at 5.27, which is well below the sector average of 8.03, making this a great value stock. And if you look at Tegna on Seeking Alpha, 
you can see that Seeking Alpha analyst rated a buy, Wall Street analyst rated a buy, and the technical quant rating is a hold. But look at the valuation. It's a B plus. Growth is an A minus. Profitability is an A minus. For all the fundamentals, this stock is a strong buy. It's only when you start to look at the technicals between the quant rating, the momentum factor, and the revisions factor that you see the stock sort of trading flat. But outside of the stock trading flat, if you look at the fundamentals, it's a really strong buy. You'll also notice on this chart how the stock has been trading mostly flat for the past six months. And as you learned in yesterday's video, this type of market movement where the stock trades flat is known as accumulation. And this is the point where value investors like myself love to be jumping in and buying the stock before it starts running back up again. So those are the two stocks that I added onto on Friday. Now let's talk about the new stock that I added to the portfolio as a new brand new position. And that stock is CVS, which is CVS Healthcare. The stock is trading near a 52 week low and this stock is a direct competitor to Walgreens. Now CVS stock is really different from the vast majority of the stocks that are in the Millionaire Club portfolio. For the vast majority of the stocks in the Millionaire Club portfolio, these are generally stocks that have been beat down, that have very, very low valuations, that are extremely undervalued, generally because something is going on that's kind of wrong with the company. CVS is in a very different boat. CVS is more of a Warren Buffett style stock than a John Templeton style stock. The difference between those two is John Templeton, he was a billionaire who made his money by buying undervalued stocks and then waiting for them to get up to fair value and then selling them. Warren Buffett's a billionaire who made his money by buying fairly valued stocks in great companies and then just holding them and letting them naturally rise in price over time as the company grew. So these are very two different ways of investing in value stocks. And CBS is definitely more of the Warren Buffett approach than the John Templeton approach. So you're not going to see the extremely low P.E. ratios like you see on most of the stocks in this portfolio. This one you've got to look at from a very different viewpoint. The P.E. ratio on CBS is currently 29 compared to a sector average of 19. Now you're probably asking, Scott, how is that possibly a value stock when the P.E. is 30? Well, you got to remember when you're looking at companies that are expected to grow in the future, you can't necessarily use the P.E. ratio because that's what they did in the past. And just like Walgreens, CVS had one really bad quarter, which caused their overall past P.E. ratio to be quite low. If you look at the forward P.E. ratio on CVS, what they're expected to do in the future, it's only 13. And that's below 15. And that is why this is a value stock. It's a value stock based upon future earnings growth, not what they did in the past. And if you look at the analysts who are covering the stock, the price targets range everywhere from $81 all the way up to $110. And the stock is currently trading $65. So it's well below even the lowest analyst expectations for where the price is expected to go in the future. Meaning even if the stock only gets up to the lowest price, we're still going to see a, about a 20 or 30% profit on the stock. And if it gets up to the average price, we're going to see the stock rise by more than 30%. Now, if you don't know how to do fundamental analysis, you can just go on Seeking Alpha and look at the Seeking Alpha numbers and their ratings in order to find how well a company is doing fundamentally without having to have any knowledge whatsoever on how to actually read balance sheets or income statements. For example, if we look at WBA Walgreens Boots Alliance on Seeking Alpha, the Seeking Alpha analysts rate this a buy, Wall Street analysts rate it a hold, and Quant rates it a hold. And if you look at the factor grades, it's an A on valuation. That's why it's in the Millionaire Club portfolio. But it's an F on growth, a C minus on profitability. And technically, it's a D on momentum and a D on revisions. 
Now, if you compare that to CVS, CVS has a seeking analyst rating of a buy, a Wall Street rating of a buy, and a quant rating of a hold, meaning fundamentally it's a buy and technically it's a hold. If you look at the factor grades, the valuation is A minus, just a little bit below Walgreens. The growth is a D minus, slightly better than Walgreens, but the profitability is an A plus. And then technically, the momentum and revisions are C, meaning the stock is trading flat. Now, because this is a new stock that's being added to the Millionaire Club portfolio, I am going to go into a deep dive on the fundamentals to kind of show you guys what's happening. First, let's take a look at the income statement, and you can see that the revenues have generally been increasing. Without even looking at the numbers, we can just look at this little spark chart here, and you can see how the revenue is increasing every quarter. Reading this, of course, from right to left. Looking at their earnings per share, they had one bad quarter, which hurt their annual P.E. ratio. But like I said, outside of that one bad quarter, everything looks good and the company is profitable. Now, the earnings per share have been decreasing. If you look at the past three quarters, they've gone down and down. So this is why CBS stock is so cheaply priced right now. But should they be able to turn that around and get their profitability back up, this stock could very quickly turn around and start going back up. Of course, any stock that has a low valuation is going to have a low valuation for some reason. Don't expect to find a stock with a very low valuation that is just perfect and everything's great and everything's just wonderful in the world with a stock. There's always going to be something that has a reason for the stock having a low valuation. The job is to look at that reason and then ask yourself, is it a good enough reason to keep me from buying the stock or do I think the company can turn things around in the future? Now, moving on to the balance sheets, CVS has $67 billion in current assets and $79 billion in current liabilities. Now, this is not something that I like to see on a stock. And normally, this would actually exclude the stock from even being included in the Millionaire Club portfolio. I never like to see the current liabilities greater than the current assets because that could indicate that the company is going to have to do some share offering soon in order to stay in business. But in the case of CVS, because they are profitable, I don't see that as that great of a concern. But it is something to watch out for. It is something that concerns me. And that's why I only bought one share of CVS because of this concern. We'll see how they do in the future, see how they make it next quarter, see if we want to add on or not. But that's why I went really, really small in this position was because the balance sheet really isn't great. Now, let's take a look at some of the other ratings that we can find on Seeking Alpha to get a better picture of how well the stock is actually doing. And let's start with the dividend grade. The dividend safety is rated a B. Dividend growth is a B plus. Dividend yield is an A plus at 3.62%. And dividend consistency is a B plus. So CVS makes a great dividend stock as well as a value stock. Moving on to the valuation, its overall rating is an A minus. You can see it's pretty much A's all across the board, with the exception of the PETTM. TTM is trailing 12 months. That's their past PE ratio, which, as I've already explained, is bad because of one bad quarter. But that will drop off when they report their next earnings, and that will get fixed after they report their next earnings. So overall, CVS is good, but not great. And the reason I bought it is partially for some diversification against WBA. You see, CVS overtook WBA as far as the number of stores they have here in the US. They're now larger than Walgreens. And because they're growing faster than Walgreens, it's possible that they'll be able to continue to take market share away from Walgreens, which is why if they do continue to grow at that rate, I might see CVS stock start to go up while Walgreens stock starts to go down. We haven't really seen that yet right now. They're both moving in unison. But if we start to see that in the future, then I want some exposure to CVS in addition to Walgreens so that either one of those discount retailers, which by the way, they're both extremely undervalued right now, 
either one of those pharmacies, corner stores. I mean, they're in a lot of different brands and a lot of different things they do. But if either one of those is able to rebound or start to go up, I really want to have both because I'm not sure which one is going to outperform. So these are the stocks that we have in the Millionaire Club portfolio. That's what I bought. This is why. If you guys want to join us in this portfolio, I do recommend you open a new brokerage account to do this portfolio in so that you can keep it separate from your normal trades. I did the $6,500 for a year. So if you want to do a Roth IRA, this is a great way to invest in a Roth IRA. Otherwise, you can just do a traditional account. That's where I'm doing this one in. And if you're looking for a new broker, you want to open up a brand new broker to separate this from your normal brokers, I do recommend either Webull or Moomoo. Both Webull and Moomoo have some incredible offers right now. Moomoo is offering up to 16 free stocks plus a $50 cash receipt. And Webull is offering up to 12 free stocks. You just check the description of this video for the latest offers and see what they're each offering. They're both incredible. Of course, both Moomoo and Webull, you can get those all over the world. If you're in the US, Canada, the UK, Australia, there is a platform for you in just about any country that you're in. So check the description of the video for the latest offers, sign up, get your free stocks, and join us in this Millionaire Club Portfolio Challenge.